This evening, let us very prayerfully bow down our heads in prayer as we invite the Spirit of the Lord to come and bless us with His presence. Our Father and our God, what a privilege is it for us to open your word one more time at the beginning of another brand new Sabbath. Thank you for having blessed us throughout the past six days. And as we open your word, it is our prayer, and it's our desire that we have a look at Jesus and his countenance. And it's our plea that we be transformed into his glory, into his image. Pray that you bless us, cleanse us, transform us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about New Jerusalem. What does the Bible mean when it talks about New Jerusalem? Let's go and look at this wonderful verse. Here is John that is exiled to the island of Patmos. And right over there, as he was carried away in the spirit, he saw a great and a high mountain. And the Lord showed John, the revelator, this wonderful city, and this city is called the New Jerusalem, and it was descending out of the heaven of God. But I want to particularly zero in to one physical aspect about this New Jerusalem. I want you to come with me very prayerfully. The Bible says, it had a wall great and high. Now here's the question that I want to ask all of us. Do you know, friends, how many gates does New Jerusalem have? Twelve. Are you sure? Yes. You're quite sure. The Bible is very clear on that. The Bible says, uh, New Jerusalem had twelve gates. I want you to very prayerfully look at this as I show this verse. Here is the description of how they look. East, west, north, south, how many each? Three. three. How many directions? Four. four. So four into three equals twelve. Did you get that, friends? I want you to look at this very prayerfully. Twelve gates. Where is this? New Jerusalem. How many gates? Twelve. Which gate will you enter into? I know one of them. The front, the main one. Beg your pardon? The main gate. The main gate. Who told you that? I came through the back gate. Okay. I want to ask myself a question. Have you any time thought about it? Why does the Bible say that there are 12 gates in New Jerusalem? Do you know, friends, not all of you are going to enter through the same gate? If that's the case, 11 gates would have been in vain. Does the Lord have a reason in particular? Or does the Lord say there is a Jamaica gate, a Barbados gate, an India gate, Latvia gate? Yes or no? God is no respecter of person. Tonight, the Lord has a great message for all of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, the Bible is very clear. And at each of these 12 gates is standing somebody who is called an angel. For those of you who have just walked inside, we are studying about New Jerusalem and 12 gates and 12 angels. And at each of the gate is standing an angel. Question number two. Is there a name for each of the 12 gates in New Jerusalem? Yes. Yes. I'm not asking a very tough question. No, it's not. So very simple. Is there a, is there a name? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Let's go here. Revelation 21 and verse 12. 12 gates, 
12 angels are names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes, tribes of the children of Israel. Let us just back up. Here is New Jerusalem. Here is John the Revelator that seeing this wonderful city of God, the holy city of God, emanating, descending from heaven. On the description about this New Jerusalem is that each of these directions, east, west, north and south, of three gates, so four into three, twelve, and all these twelve gates have twelve angels, and the most important thing is that each of these gate has a name, and all these twelve names happen to be the tribes of the children of Israel. And so the next question that common sense will stimulate you is, who is Israel? Who is Israel? Very simple. What was Israel's previous name? And always we say we are the children of Israel. But technically they are the children of Jacob. And how many did he have? Twelve. Very simple. I want you to get the sequence here. Now let's continue here. Let's go to the next one. Wall great and high. Twelve gates. Twelve angels. I want you to look here. Twelve gates. Each gate has a name. The next slide is very important. These are the twelve tribes of the children of Israel or the 12 sons of Jacob and who are the 12 sons you know it very well why does the Bible say that these names are named after the 12 sons of Jacob what is so important that these guys names should be forever written for immortality are you getting the point which means God as a message for us. You know the Bible talks about 144,000. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Now most of us know who this 144,000 is. But the most important thing that you and I have to understand is that God says, I have to seal my servants where? On the forehead. Now most of them have a mistaken notion. They take it for granted. It's going to be physical. Friends, I want to tell you, do not be deceived. It's got nothing to do physically on your forehead. You know what does forehead symbolize? Forehead, what does that symbolize? Praise God. This is where your the seat of intelligence. This is where your will is. You agree with me? This is where your judgment is. In New Jerusalem, Mobile phones will never ring. Amen. 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 Praise God. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence, including mobile phones. Let's continue. Now, God says, Hope not the earth until we've sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. God is sealing your decision. God is sealing your covenant. God is sealing your judgment. God is sealing your decision. If that is the case, we are now going to have a fresh look at all the 12 names. And these are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And these are the 12 sons of whom? Jacob. And these names are written in New Jerusalem forever and each of these gate has a name point number one i want you to look at verse five very quickly tell me the three names there let we don't have time to go through it what are the three names of the sons judah, judah reuben cat let's look at verse six aser nephthalim manasseh. manasseh good let's go to verse seven Simeon, Levi, Issachar. Let's go to verse 8. Zebulun, Joseph, 
Benjamin. How many have you told? Twelve. Very good. Now, God says, till we have sealed the servants of our God. In other words, God is telling the angels, hurt not the earth. There's going to be a very special group of people that God is preparing right now before he could allow the four winds of the destruction to come upon. I want you to listen to me carefully as the Holy Spirit is teaching us a very important and a prominent lesson for those of us as we're going to meet Jesus in Revelation. Hallelujah. The Bible is very clear. Hurt not the earth. God has a special group of people. Just before he could come the second time, and they are so exclusive, so special, like how he had 12 disciples during his time, he is going to have 12 times 12,000. And these are going to be the last day evangelists. These are going to be the last day apostles. And they will live just before Jesus could come. These are not dead people who are waiting for the resurrection. These are real people who are alive waiting for Jesus to come. Are you getting my point? Now the question is, when the Bible says all these names, is it literal or spiritual? Praise God. It is not literal. In terms of of understanding the meaning let's try to see whether these names and tribes are really spiritual or literal I'm going to give you three verses let's go and read Romans chapter 2 we're going to look at verse 8 for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision outward in the flesh look here at verse 29 he is a Jew which is one inwardly just because you're circumcised, that doesn't make you a Jew. Now, particularly in the light of 144,000, these are spiritual Jews. These are not only the Jews exclusively. This is referring spiritually. Let's go to another one. I want you to come with me to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Here comes the most important one. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. I'm going to read a very important verse now. Please come with me to this word. Romans chapter 9, write it down as we look at this. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are all not Israel, which are of, of Israel. Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham or children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be blessed. In other words, I want you to come with me to the next slide. This is fantastic. Please look here. How many gates? Twelve. Twelve. How many angels? Twelve. How many names? And who, who are these? And what are the 12 names? These are the tribes of the children of Israel. Israel. And these happen to be the real, literal sons of Jacob. Who later on turned into the names of tribes. Now my question is, why in the world did God put these guys' names that is going to be embellished, immortal, and all of us will enter into one of the gates. Is that a reasonable question? Does that make sense? Do you want to know the answer for that? Twelve gates. Twelve angels. Twelve tribes. And the names of the gate. For example, you go to the airport, you want to fly out. You cannot go to any gate that you like. Okay, you want to go from here to India, I have to go to Terminal 3, correct? And in Terminal 3, do you know how many gates are there? You know how many gates? You will not believe if I tell you how many gates are in Heathrow. Very challenging. But I landed 
in terminal 3. My brother came to pick me exactly in terminal 3. And he knew which gate I'm coming out. And I cannot go and say, no, I want to exit in gate 4. What will they tell me? They'll give me a free ticket back home. <laughs> Never to return. There is a reason for that. I want you to understand the simple logic. Lord, please teach us why are there 12 tribes and these guys' names written. Question number one. I want to talk about this family of Jacob and these. I want to ask you another question. Who are standing at the entrance of these gates? Angels. Who are standing? Angels. Angels. So let me ask you a question. If you want to enter into this new Jerusalem, who alone will literally let you walk in? Do you agree with that? Yeah. It's only the angels who will let you walk in. If that is the case, who alone can go? Don't you ever think anybody and everybody can enter into this? Let's go here. Revelation 22, 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Shall we say amen? amen? Not all who say Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of God. But whoever doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Don't you ever think it's easy to slip into it? Maybe there is an angel here. They block you here. You want to sneak around and run there. No. The Bible is very clear. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Amen. And these are the ones who have the right to the tree of life. And these are the ones who exclusively will enter in through the gates. Gate is very important. Without the gate or the door. You would never have had an entrance inside. Wait a moment. Lord, I understand that you are allowing us to go through the gate. And it's also fairly logic and reasonable for me to analyze very critically that uh, you have some reason. But help us and teach us, Lord. Why in the world are you having names of the sons of Jacob? And do you mean to say, Lord, I will enter into Judah or Manasseh gate or Simeon or Levi or Zebulun or Naphtali or, or, or whatever it is, Benjamin or Joseph? Let me just tell you. You know, friends, 144,000, particularly in the light of Revelation chapter 21, is not theology or doctrine. It's a practical life. Amen. The Holy Spirit is going to blow your mind. Number one, who was the firstborn of Jacob? Tell me, who was the firstborn? You're not sure? Even a kindergarten will tell me. Who was the firstborn? Praise God. Do you know what kind of a man was Reuben? What kind of a man was he? Who slept? Which of the twelve sons slept with his father's concubine. Who? And his name is written in one of the gates. Mm -hmm. Let me back up a little bit. You know what kind of guys these were? These were the guys who sold their own brother Joseph. You know what kind of guys were these? Murderous. Envious. Haters, despisers, jealous. We can go on and on. Let's back up a little bit. Who was the pastor in the family? Louder, that's a good one. Who was the pastor? Levi. And do you know what did this pastor do? You remember what happened to the sister Dina? Right? You remember the story of Shechem in Genesis 34? Okay, you know what happened to the sister and what did this pastor do? 
he went. Who is this? The pastor. He went and murdered. Who was the other guy who joined him? Levi and Simeon murdered. And their names are written in heaven. Come on, wait a minute. Let's go to the other one. Judah. Nice name. Do you know what kind of a guy was he? He slept with his own daughter-in-law. And his name is written in heaven. And you will pass through that gate. I'm trying to stimulate your thinking. Mm -hmm. What's the reason? Despite their weaknesses, do you know how many mothers gave birth to these four? Sorry, I, I already told the answer. <laughs> how many mothers gave birth to these 12 children? How do you know that? You were very brilliant, and I was foolish. <laughs> How many mothers? Four mothers. Looks like quite a dysfunctional family. One father? How many mothers? Four. Four. Man, I can't manage even one wife. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> Four mothers. And if you look at every one of their story, you may not even want to look at them one more time. But there is a reason why God wrote their names on the gates. You know why? At one point, they all repented. I want you to know. That's the reason your name and my name is still being written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. And every time you read their name, and every time you have a look at one of the sons, you will identify a similar character. And that's the gate the Lord is going to allow you to pass through. Do you know that? So when you see somebody pass through Levi gate, you better tell him that guy was a murderer and he hated his church members. Mm. That's why the Lord, you see somebody passing under Judah gate, just hush yourself and you know what kind of a man was he, mm. right? Mm. Everybody will get through different gates. Mm. But we're going to look at the most important factor tonight. Husbands, <coughs> beware, your wife will watch you go through which gate? Wives, beware. Now let me just back up a little bit and look at this most sensitive issue. What makes the difference? Previously and now. I want you to come with me. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I want to stress a little bit on this wonderful concept. This evening, the message is simple. And the simple message is overcomer. Will you please tell after me? Overcomer. overcomer. One more time. One more time. Overcomer. overcomer. Look at all the seven churches. What is the name of the first church? In the book of Revelation. All seven churches. First church. Good. Second. Smyrna. Third one. Okay. Fourth one. Tottenham Hill. What is the church? The fourth one, the Bible. You all should know this. Good. Next. Sardis. It's really high time all of you read the Bible. It's really high time. Sardis. Next. It starts with P. I, you, you know, by now, all of you, it should just zoom out of your mouth. Philadelphia. And last one, L. Not Luton. Now the Bible is very clear. 
Lord, in all these churches, the Lord says at the end, let him who hath ear, let him hear Amen. what the Spirit said unto the churches. Mm -hmm. You know, in all these churches, God says only one word. He that overcometh. You know, friends, most of us have trouble. Amen. Pastor, you don't know. This runs in our family. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the 12 sons of Jacob written. And every time you read these names, every time you come across this story, do you know why is the Bible so respected and the bestseller in the whole world? It talks the reality. It doesn't talk and project only the good things. It talks also and exposes the baddest of the bad things. Jesus is very real tonight. He knows you inside out. And this meeting, he wants you to come to the foot of the cross and study about New Jerusalem. He wants you to look at the 12 entrances. He knows if he had only one gate, you will say, Lord, I'm not worthy. You will go back. God decided to put 12 gates so that he will catch you in all directions you run. It doesn't matter where you run and how far you run and whatever sin you commit, you will all come under this 12 gate section. And from wherever you are, you can enter the kingdom of God. Amen. And the good news of the gospel is that every direction, he will catch you three times. Amen. That's what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is all about. It is not genetic disorder. Hmm. Pastor, you have to understand it's a weakness. Jesus came and died for adulterers like you and me. Hmm. For thieves like you and me. Hmm. You cannot keep on continuing in sin. He's preparing a church that is spotless without blemish. Good news of the gospel is that every time you look at the cross and every time you look at Jesus and his blood you tell Lord how can I be lost and every time you look at yourself you will say Lord how can I be saved so you better keep looking at the cross be an overcomer let's spend a little bit of time here what does the Bible mean you know who will be outside the gate the fearful the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, homongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars will have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. I want to get into a very deep spiritual meaning. Listen to us. The Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments. Praise God. Here comes the most important spiritual point. Please. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. And over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. You know these are the people who stand on the sea of what? Glass. glass and they have the harps of God. Okay. Quick question. How many gates? How many angels? Twelve. How many names? Twelve. How many foundations? Twelve. How many foundations? Twelve. I didn't know you had too many authors in your church. Everybody is writing your own book. How many foundations? Come on, you all know it. Most of them have no idea that they have 12 foundations. You know how many foundations? I want you to look at the spiritual meaning. Most of them think, oh, it's going to be real children of Israel in the last days. Why the number 144,000 is a specific 
and the literal number. Do you understand? Yes. Well, the number is literal, but the way they are going to perform and be manifest is completely spiritual and not Jewish, but and not literal. It will be spiritual in nature. Let me explain to you. Do you know what is the word Judah mean? Come on, you read at the right side. I will read the name, you read the meaning. The word Judah means? The word Reuben means? Gad? Aser? Nephthalim? Manasseh? Simeon? Levi? Issachar? Zabulon? Joseph? Benjamin? Do you know what is the meaning of that? When you look at the order in which God has given, the meaning of the experience is that I will praise the Lord. He has looked on me and granted good fortune. Happy am I. My wrestling God is making me to forget. God hears me and he's attached to me and he has purchased me a dwelling place and he will add to me the son of his right hand. That is what New Jerusalem is all about. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't allow anybody, shall we say amen to the Lord? Amen. Don't allow anybody to come and confuse you and tell them. Now, let me go to the most important thing. The Bible says, these are the people who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What has the 12 gates got to do in my spiritual experience? There's a great lesson. There's a powerful punch as we finish this. Come with me to Revelation 21 and verse 21. And the 12 gates were 12. Pearls. Hallelujah. Did you know that? Each gate is made out of a pearl. Did you know that? Don't you ever think that the Lord simply put these details, 12 gates, 12 foundations. There is a reason. Are you ready? It's a lovely punch. Every several gate was one of pearl. Mm -hmm. And of course, what would be the street? Gold. Gold. Thank you. 24 carat? I want to ask you a question as we bring this message to a close. What does the word pearl mean? Girls? You like pearls? You like pearls, right? But we are going to enter to the pearly gate. Don't, don't just take a little bit and put it here on it. No, that's not good. I want to challenge myself. Listen to this. If you want to go through the gate, you have to enter through which gate? The pearly gate. All 12 gates, 12 pearls? Let me ask you a question. How do you get a pearl? I want you to be a little bit scientific. Do you grow? I'm just trying to make a point. How do you get pearls? Come on, tell me. What is that little? What is that little creature? Oyster, and how does the oyster turn into a pearl? Praise the Lord. You know what? What? What obstructs them? The grains. The grains or the sand. The grains of sand. In other words, it is because of the irritant. It is because of the suffering of the oyster. It turns into a pearl. Most of you here are oysters. And there are several sand attacking and obstructing. You're going through suffering and difficulty and disease. Praise God, you are entering through one of the 12 gates right now. Don't you ever think this is an ordinary message that we have? I want to close by reading this wonderful, the first foundation Jasper, Sapphire, Chalcedony, Emerald, Sardonyx, Sardius, Chrysolite, Burnham, Topaz, Chrysopresus, Jacinth, 
Amethyst. All these things are the different trials that God will take us through. I was married and I was very excited. And I was doubly excited when I learned that my wife was pregnant. And we we're going to have a beautiful, I shouldn't say son, you know. I was really praying for a son. I went for a week of prayer like this. Before I could go home, I lost my first one. Next year, she conceived again. I went for another meeting like this. I lost my second one. Oh. Two years, my wife never conceived. And after two years, I lost my third one. Oh. Don't you ever think I simply stand before you and keep preaching? Mm -hmm. The doctor's told. My wife is a nurse, by the way. She knew scientifically. The doctor's told, I will never become a father. Here was I preaching. And I myself didn't have a sign of manifestation of the glory of God in my life. We've shed tears. And somebody instructed us, there is a very special injection that you've got to put in your, in your wife's body so that it will really hold the baby. I suggested that to my wife. It would cost us a lot of money. But my wife said, no. Even if I do not have a child, even if I have to be called barren, it's okay. You won't believe, friends, we only knelt down and prayed. We lost all hopes of ever being called as parents. Today, as I stand before you, I am the father of two lovely daughters. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's worth going through. One of the greatest stuff for pastors, you would agree with me is to go to the bedside of a dying patient, HIV, cancer. Parents, my heart goes out for you as you think of your young teenage kids. Teenagers, I can wear your shoes very well. The kind of struggles you go through. Your flesh is quite weak, but your spirit is very willing. You want to strike a balance. You want to be with God, but somehow that the flesh is overtaking you is worth going through the suffering like oysters go through the irritants even if you lose your life it's okay because that's the pearl that will make you enter into the kingdom of God Amen. let's make a decision this evening you've not heard a sermon I don't like to appeal to your intellect that's not my profession what good does it do if a man shall gain the whole world and lose his all? Tonight, do you know why is this story recorded? If the name of Levi and Simeon and Judah and Reuben could be written there, God is giving you assurance. In the days to come, this will be the same character that will be assimilated. But at one point, they gave their lives and they became all comers. Tonight, the Lord wants you, the Lord wants me to be all comers. Let him that hath ear hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh, to him will I grant to sit with me on my Father's throne. He that overcometh. I will give him a hidden manner. He that overcometh, I will give him a new name. He that overcometh will sit with me. He that overcometh. All what makes the difference is being an overcomer. Twelve gates remind you that God is throwing his open arms and he wants all of you. I want to go back to this very same one and put all the meaning of those twelve you will fall into one of the categories. I want you to know that. Sometimes you'll keep praising the Lord. But the good news of the gospel is that the pearls make the gate. Every gate is made out of single pearl. And the Lord wants you to go through the suffering 
That's why I put that thing initially, showing about the persecution in India. Very soon is coming a time where you will not even get up in the morning. There's going to be such a tremendous economic recession. There's going to be a new world order. There's going to be globalization. Very soon there's going to be buying and selling that will not be permitted except for those who have the mark of the beast. Very soon you cannot use your credit cards. Don't put your trust in your debit cards or credit cards. Buying and selling. But the Lord is sealing on your forehead right now. Shall we bow down? As we make a decision this evening. The Lord says, hurt not the earth until we have sealed our servants on the forehead. The Lord is preparing a people just like the sons of Jacob who had weaknesses. The Lord is calling you and me. They were physical Jews, but we are spiritual Jews. Our names may not be Manasseh or Judah or Levi, but our characters and our manifestation are the same. Don't lose heart, my friend. Right now, the Lord wants to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And He wants you to be an overcomer. Are you going through trials? Are you going through major challenges and difficulties? They are not even compared to be worthy of what we will experience in just a short while from now. The Lord is serious with you. He died for you. And He wants you to give your life to Him right now. We are going to spend about a moment. Please get serious with your life. Tell the Lord, Lord, I am a sinner. I have several weaknesses. I'm struggling, Lord. Please help me to be an overcomer. Are you suffering with bad thoughts, pornography, drugs, premarital sex, extramarital affair? Tonight the Lord says, repent. My blood is available. His arms are open. This is not a theology right now he wants you to be a part of his kingdom he will get you into the kingdom by any gate by any means every direction the lord wants to throw three gates no matter how far you've gone from god will you please give your lives and come to the lord during this code of adventism please walk through the pearly gates we want to sing this song we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Could you kindly help me in reading out this song? What number is that? <laughs> Every step goes higher, huh? Thank you, shepherds. Lead us in this song. Sing this song.
this is going to be an absolutely total exclusive silent moment between you and the Lord. Tonight is a great night for all of us. Jacob's ladder, Jacob's sons, 12 gates, 12 angels, 12 tribes, 12 names, 12 pearly gates. The Lord has done everything to save you. Even if you were the only sinner, still he would have emptied all of heaven's glory and he would have come just for you, just for you alone. Tonight, for the next one minute, it's between you and the Lord. Please, please, don't you ever leave this place without giving your life to the Lord. One minute of absolute, total talk between you and the Lord. 